Hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining me again. This is the second part in a four-part series on calculating overcurrent sizes for transformer installations based off of the 23rd edition of the Canadian Electrical Code, uh, specific to section 26. In this rule, or in this rather video, we're going to take a look at 26256 specifically, which is our dry type transformer, uh, sorry, under 750 volts. Okay, so in the previous video we looked at over 750 volts, which was not specific to dry or other than dry type. This one is specific to dry type under 750 volts. So we'll start with the same scenario that we did in the last video, which is where we figured out the overcurrent for primary protection only. And when we say primary, we need to understand the difference between the primary protection, which is individual protection for a transformer on the primary, versus our primary feeder, which we'll deal with when we decide to omit that primary overcurrent, okay? So, in this scenario, we have primary protection only, which adequately protects the secondary of my transformer, meaning I do not need a secondary protection in there, okay? This could be going out to, this would be our primary feeder. Maybe we have other loads out there. Again, we don't care right now about sizing our primary feeder that would be done separately from this. This is just for individually sizing our overcurrent to our individual primary, okay? So, if we take a look, 26256 sub rule 1 tells us that if I have primary protection on a dry type under 750 volt transformer, it shall be set at not more than 125% of rated primary current. So first of all, obviously we need to figure out what is our rated primary current. Okay? So we are going to take a look. We have our 50,000 VA or 50 kVA divided by my line voltage of 600 volts and again because it is a three-phase transformer we're going to go times root three make sure we get those in brackets we end up with an i primary or rated primary current of 48.1 amps okay and what it tells me as i said in 26256 sub rule one is we're going to use 1.25 or 125 percent as our multiplier so times 1.25 gives me a max value of 60.125 amps. Now, sub rule two deals with what happens when we omit that primary protection. We have to skip ahead to sub rule three. This little part is buried in sub rule three. It actually tells me in sub rule one, if there is no overcurrent setting from table 13 at this right here, we are allowed to go up to the next available size. So it's a little bit buried in the actual rule. We have to read a little bit. But if there is no overcurrent rated at 125% of rated primary, we are allowed to go up to the next available size. So table 13, we're going to go up and we are going to choose a 70 amp overcurrent. So this would become a 70 amp overcurrent. That would adequately protect our secondary side. It would adequately protect our primary side. Again, primary feeder, we're not going to worry about right now. That's the next thing we're going to do. Okay, so if we move to omitting our primary overcurrent, just like in the previous video, if I was to remove this primary overcurrent, we're going to get rid of that right now. Okay, 26250 tells me, again, I still have to have some type of disconnecting means in here. Maybe it's, again, we'll just use an unfused disconnect. There we go. We want to know what happens if we get rid of that primary, or are we allowed to get rid of that primary? We are, according to sub rule 2, 26256, okay? And it gives us the actual multipliers right in the rule. Sub rule 2 tells me that if we are going to omit primary protection, which we're allowed to do, I must have a secondary overcurrent, and again, it doesn't matter whether it's a breaker or a fuse in this rule, that is set at not more than 125%. So we're going to need to figure out what is our rated secondary current here. Okay, so we have current on the secondary is 50,000 VA divided by my secondary line voltage of 208 volts. I end up with current on the secondary is, should be right around 138.8 amps. And as we've just read in that rule, I can have, or I'm sorry, to omit this, I have to have a secondary 
overcurrent at set at not more than 125% of rated secondary. So times 1.25 gives me a maximum rated value of 173.5. Okay, subrule three only applies to primary protection only, so not this situation. Okay, my secondary, I am not allowed to exceed 125% of my rated secondary. So we end up 173.5 amps. Table 13, we must go down and we are gonna choose a 150 amp overcurrent. And again, not specific to fuse or breaker, okay? So, our primary feeder, because it also tells us in subrule two, that if I am omitting that primary protection, that primary individual protection, I must have a breaker set at, again, not more than 125% of rated secondary, and I must have primary feeder protection set at not more than 300% of rated primary. So in the previous example, we went through and we calculated our rated primary was 48.1. So we're gonna use that number, okay? Because it tells me my primary feeder We are going to take our rated primary of 48.1 amps, multiply it by that 300%. So three gives us a maximum rated value on our primary feeder of 144.3, somewhere around there. And again, there's no exception to this. It tells me I just, I can't be greater than 300%. So table 13, we go down and we are going to select a 125 amp over current. Okay, so to recap on this example, if I want to omit primary protection, okay, I am going to need to have a secondary overcurrent, not more than 125% of rated secondary current, and a primary feeder overcurrent rated or set up not more than 300% of rated primary current. So hopefully this video has helped. In the next video, we are going to take a look at other than dry type transformers under 750 volts and hopefully this will help as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.